Greetings YouTube and welcome to my latest weapons build. You're looking at a fish. Specifically, you're looking at a solid resin fish. This is some kind of uh, statue, statue that was I picked up at a thrift shop for three bucks. Um, obviously it's supposed to be emulating some kind of, you know, pseudo primitive kind of a vibe there going there. But uh, I saw it and the first thing I thought of was hammerhead. As in not a hammerhead shark, but as in a hammerhead of an actual device. So I'm going to mount this resin fish onto this shaft. Now, this is going to be an art piece. It would not withstand any kind of actual use. This is just going to be for show, just purely an art piece. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to probably cut it, I'll cut these two uh, sections off here and I would like to sink it up to here so that the fish would sit like that. That would be my ideal situation. Uh, obviously, this particular uh, axe handle has seen some, seen some better days. I do not have any idea what happened to it. I'm just going to sand it and probably treat it with some tongue oil, which I forgot to bring down from upstairs. That's annoying. But um, but yeah, so I'm going to sand that down just by hand. I don't need to get any power tools out for something like this. Just do it by hand. And um, I'm going to need to drill here. So I'm going to come up with, kind of try to make a center line, figure out how wide this is after I cut these off, because the width may be different between the here and after I get these off and here. So I want to measure the true, true width of this whole section in here. So I'm going to have to drill multiple holes, and then I'll have to m remove the, the little points left over from doing that. Um, and I'm just probably going to use a standard drill bit for this. I don't think I'll need anything anything special. Because so I think this is going to be harder than wood. So I don't think a spade bit's really going to do the job. So I'm just probably going to use a standard drill bit on this one. Um, though I, and I, I'm going to make sure I make a nice deep uh, divot with an awl so that, uh, which I should be able to use an awl on this, um, so that the drill bit will not walk on me. And then I'm going to probably use two part epoxy as well as a single wood screw. So I'm going to want to drill probably on the other side. I'm probably gonna make this my, I may make this, I think I'm gonna make this my show side of this particular device. And I'll drill a pilot hole through this after, after I get it in there. And then once I get it epoxied in place, put the epoxy in, then go right through it and hold that have that have the, the the screw be the clamp so this that the clamp so the whole thing will be held together with that and when i'm done let it dry and then we're finished that's fairly straightforward i think i will probably have to put some kind of spacers under this while it's drying because i'm probably just going to dry it here on top of the bench um and uh and I clean up any drool I end up with. I'm not going to use a whole lot of epoxy, just enough to do the job. That's, that would be nice. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut this so I can get some measurements. Because once I get those two sections cut off, um, I'll probably just use a handsaw on that one. Then I will be able to figure out what size holes I need to, to drill here. So time to break out the handsaw. And I was wrong because I am going to be using a spade bit because it's the bit closest to the dimension I need, which is 15 sixteenths. So I'm going to drill three 15 sixteenths holes, which will leave me a little bit of peaks in the middle. Um, and I'm going to use those peaks to help really provide the physical guidance when I'm done because I need to. Uh, have a little bit of snugness in there so I don't get a lot of slop, either side to side or this way. Because I'm only going to be going in that far. Again, this is not an actual weapon. This is just going to be a showpiece, so it doesn't have to be uber stable. It just has to be stable enough. And I really don't want to have to drill any further into this than necessary. So now I'm going to figure out how deep that's going to be. So I'm going to have to figure out that distance. And then I will mark the drill bit with, uh, actually I can just go to that. I can just go to there. That's good enough. Just go right down there till I get to the shaft, and that's close enough. And then I'll be able to sink this thing in there pretty solid, I think. So now I'm going to have to clamp this to, to, to the bench, because that's only the really way I'm going to be able to stabilize this, is to clamp it like this, put some spacers down on the other side, clamp it down, and then start drilling. 
Newsflash, this isn't solid. This is hollow. Um, and it goes in that far. So it's that deep. That's a significant amount of depth. So I'm changing the handle design. I'm going to a solid handle, which I happen to have. I got lucked out. I found this one. So I am going to do the same thing because it's still the approximately the same width. So I'm going to drill that and then drill out or cut out this, the middle part. I don't know which. And then bring it all the way down and have it sit on the inside. The problem is, is that how do I keep it from doing that? Yeah, I can epoxy the end in, but even if this is just a showpiece, that's has a lot of slot. And I don't want to have to buy enough resin to fill up the entire interior of this thing. I mean, I could. I mean, I did the, the, my local hardware store probably has it, but it's not cheap. Resin is not cheap. I would really rather not have to fill that. I mean, I could use, and cement's really annoying to work with. I mean, I've got some cement here. I have to build, I'd have to mix it really loose to get that in there and fill that in. But by gosh and by golly, that would work, wouldn't it? But let's get this open first. And once I get it open, then I can deal with the neck, but deal with that. Now, one of the problems I'm having is drilling this stuff is actually a pain in the butt because clamping it this way on the bench top, I'm pushing on it. So it's trying to walk on me. I don't have anything to stop it with. So I have to figure out some way to put something behind it so that I'm not getting any movement as it goes forward because I don't have any, any, I have dog holes here. I guess, can I set it up so I have the dog holes? That would be very awkward. If I set the fish up this way, so I'm drilling at that angle, so that I would, I would have a dog, a clamp here to keep it from moving that way. But that would be very awkward, drilling at, a, at an angle like that. Not impossible, but very awkward. Do I have any other option? Because i got to keep that thing from sliding back while I'm drilling it. That's a really good question. All right, we're going to try that and see if it works. i got one more full hole, full-size hole to drill. And then I may have to drill out this or just work it off. And I used uh, I used this bit here, which is actually for wood, but resin's close enough to wood that this work quite nicely. I've been using my fan over here because it's I'm just to get a little air moving down here, and uh, it's uh, <laughs> blowing this stuff everywhere. So it's gonna be a pain in the butt to clean. So that is now completely open. So I'm going to have to open up both sides a little bit with that bit I showed you uh, to make accommodate the uh, width of the shaft I'm using. And when I drilled out that second hole, this thing just snapped off from the inside. And that's the texture that was on the inside of this thing prior to my drilling it open. And this middle section between the two holes, I actually found the easiest way to get that out was my melty tool. Let's let's hear it for Vitarinox Swiss Tools. I love this thing. I've been carrying this thing uh, since the first generation was released, oh, so many years ago. I don't get to use the the wood saw very often. This worked perfectly because it's a plunge saw. It's small enough to get in there, and it's sharp. And it did a beautiful job. Cut that out with no problem at all. So now I need to open up this a little bit to that way and a little bit that way, and then I can see how much I have to go to get it firmly in there so I really want to bottom it out on the inside of that hollow. That would be ideal to give myself the most stability I can get out of this whole process. Yeah, because this is I really kind of bum this thing isn't solid. I shouldn't be shocked it's not solid. These things were made cheaply. Um, making a solid resin piece is going to be a lot more expensive than making a hollow resin piece. And again, it's just a piece of decorative uh, sculpture. It's never meant for what I'm using it for. What a shock. I'm repurposing something in a way that it was never intended to be used. All right, now this somewhat irregularly shaped hole is actually working. So I can now get the shaft into the depth I want to get it um, up to where I, I, I mentioned earlier. I put a mark on the shaft and it's just shy of that, which is fine with me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably going to put some epoxy on the inside edge here and then slide it in and drill some pilot holes, and then two wood screws. I need to figure out what size wood screws I need. I've got a couple of star drives, or a different couple of different sized star drives kicking around. I can figure out which one I want, like one and an eighth, one and a quarter, something like that. And once I have that in there, 
drill two of them in. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go boom, boom. And then that's gonna hold this thing in place. Uh, and that's just, that's, that's just gonna have to be the way it is. I don't want to fill this entire cavity with something. It's just too much work. And this will hold it in place well enough just for show. And again, this is an art piece. This is not meant for use. So it just has to look cool. This is like as, this is as close as I get to like making a cosplay item. This is not one for use. This is just for show. So I guess this is a cosplay fish hammer. Um, I believe there might be a video game character out there that uses a fish hammer. I think I may have seen one in, a, in an action figure once. I am not attempting to emulate this. This is something that I came up before I ever knew that was around. I've had this particular statue in my collection waiting for me to finally get around to using it for a couple of years now. Um, so I'm not trying to emulate the fish hammer that's out there. This is my own original fish hammer. I know that sounds strange. Um, so <laughs> gotta get some mix up some epoxy, coat the inside of this thing, slide that home, and then we're gonna call this thing close to done because I will drill two pilot holes while it's sitting just like this in this in this uh, set of uh, channel locks. I mean, uh, um, set of, set of uh, clamps. And I'm using these dog holes, which I've had in my workbench forever, to help me do a nice job of clamping this in place because I can get them right in there tight and I'm pulling this against these shafts. So that kind of, and I was working in this direction. So every time I was moving, using that, that grinding bit, I was either pushing towards that one or that one or sliding you know, this way or that way, trying to knock off peaks. I even had to reach in there and knock off some of the peaks that are way inside there to clear a space. So I'm very glad that I have that particular um, bit in my collection. And I just picked that up at like a, an estate sale. It was just, I like, I might find a use for this someday. And well, I have found a use for that. Um, so I'm very glad I have it in my collection. And I think I got it for a song, so it didn't cost me much. Um, Cause I am a frugal SOB. So let's get the epoxy mixed up and then we'll get it coated in the inside. And then we'll uh, put that in, I'll, I'll put that in wheel, sorry. I'll put the, the shaft in drill two pilot holes and put two wood screws in there. And then this project should be done. So the next time you see this, you should be a completed cosplay fish hammer. So there we have one completed fish hammer. And the nice thing about using this handle is I didn't have to do anything to it. It was already in nice shape already. I, I had picked the other one because of the curves kind of thing. It kind of like gave me that wave form vibe. I thought it was, you know, really uh, suitable for a fish, but this was solid wood and let me get far deeper inside the head. Uh, so that's what we did. And there's epoxy around the, around the shaft. Uh, it's not filled, but there's epoxy in there. I did not fill with resin or cement or anything. I decided just to go for this. And there are two screws right there to hold that in place. And there we go. So take this outside, get some stills for this video and get some stills for my DeviantArt page and my Instagram. You should get, uh, follow me there rather, because I house my permanent stills of my weapon builds on DeviantArt. And on Instagram, I post salvage things, bargains I find, uh, weird pictures of stuff I don't pick up because they're just too strange and I don't need them, um, as well as adorable cat pics. And who doesn't love adorable cat pics? So, Thank you for being here for my latest weapons build, though one of my stranger ones. Uh, I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I hope that you'll come back for the next one.